Chapter Eighteen of the Money Moon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Money Moon, a Romance by Geoffrey Farnell. Chapter Eighteen: How the Sergeant Went Upon His Guard. The Arcadians, one and all, generally follow that excellent maxim which runs: "Early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy and wealthy and wise." Healthy they are beyond a doubt, and in their quaint, simple fashion. Profoundly wise, if they are not extraordinarily wealthy, yet are they generally blessed with contented minds, which, after all, is better than money and far more to be desired than fine gold. Now, whether their general health, happiness, and wisdom is to be attributed altogether to their early to bed proclivities, is perhaps a moot question. Howbeit, to night, long after these weary Arcadians had forgotten their various cares and troubles in the blessed oblivion of sleep, for even Arcadia has its troubles, Bellew sat beneath the shade of King Arthur alone with his thoughts. Presently, however, he was surprised to hear the house-door open, and close very softly, and to behold, not the object of his meditations, but Miss Priscilla coming towards him. As she caught sight of him in the shadow of the tree, she stopped and stood, leaning upon her stick as though she were rather disconcerted. "'Aunt Priscilla,' said he, rising. "'Oh, it's you!' she exclaimed, just as though she hadn't known it all along. "'Dear me, Mr. Bellew, how lonely you look, and dreadfully thoughtful! Good gracious!' And she glanced up at him with her quick, girlish smile. "'I suppose you are wondering what I am doing out here at this unhallowed time of night?' It must be nearly eleven o'clock. Oh, dear me, yes, you are. Well, sit down, and I'll tell you. Let us sit here, in the darkest corner. There. Oh, dear heart, how bright the moon is, to be sure. So saying, Miss Priscilla ensconced herself at the very end of the rustic bench, where the deepest shadow lay. Well, Mr. Bellew, she began, as you know, to-day is my birthday. As to my age, I am, let us say, I just turned twenty-one, and, being young and foolish, Mr. Bellew, I have come out here to watch another very foolish person, a ridiculous old sergeant of hussars, who will come marching along very soon to mount guard in full regimentals, Mr. Bellew, with his busby on his head, and his braided tunic and dolman, and his great big boots, and with his spurs jingling, and his sabre bright under the moon. So then, you know he comes? Why, of course I do, and I love to hear the jingle of his spurs, and to watch the glitter of his sabre. So every year I come here, and sit among the shadows, where he can't see me, and watch him go, march, march, marching, up and down, and to and fro, until the clock strikes twelve, and he goes marching home again. Oh, dear me, it's all very foolish, of course, but I love to hear the jingle of his spurs. And... Have you sat here watching him every year? Every year! And has he never guessed you were watching him? Oh, good gracious me, of course not! Don't you think, Aunt Priscilla, that you are just a little cruel? Cruel? Why, what do you mean? I gave him your message, Aunt Priscilla. What message? That tonight the peaches were riper than ever they were? Oh! said Miss Priscilla, and waiting expectantly for Bellew to continue. But, as he was silent, she glanced at him, and, seeing him staring at the moon, she looked at it also. And after she had gazed for perhaps half a minute, as Bellew was still silent, she spoke, though in a very small voice indeed. And what did he say? Who? inquired Bellew. Why, the, the sergeant, to be sure. Well, he gave me to understand that a poor old soldier, with only one arm left, must be content to stand aside, always, and hold his peace, just because he was a poor, maimed old soldier. Don't you think that you have been just a little cruel all these years, Aunt Priscilla? Sometimes one is cruel only to be kind, she answered. Aren't the peaches ripe enough, after all, Aunt Priscilla? Overripe, she said bitterly. Oh, they are overripe. Is that all, Aunt Priscilla? No, she answered. No. There's this. And she held up her little crutch stick. 
is that all aunt priscilla oh isn't that enough bella rose where are you going what are you going to do she demanded wait said he smiling down at her perplexity and so he turned and crossing to a certain corner of the orchard when he came back he held out a great glowing peach towards her you were quite right he nodded it was so ripe that it fell at a touch but as he spoke she drew him down beside her in the shadow hush she whispered listen now as they sat there very silent faint and far away upon the still night air they heard a sound a silvery rhythmic sound it was like the musical clash of fairy cymbals which drew rapidly nearer and nearer and bellew felt that miss priscilla's hand was trembling upon his arm as she leaned forward listening with a smile upon her parted lips and a light in her eyes that was ineffably tender nearer came the sound and nearer until presently now in moonlight now in shadow there strode a tall martial figure in all the glory of braided tunic and furred dolman the three chevrons upon his sleeve and many shining medals upon his breast a stalwart soldierly figure despite the one empty sleeve who moved with a long swinging stride that only the cavalryman can possess being come beneath a certain latticed window the sergeant halted and next moment his glittering sabre flashed up to the salute then with it upon his shoulder he wheeled and began to march up and down his spurs jingling his sabre gleaming his dolman swinging his sabre glittering each time he wheeled while miss priscilla leaning forward watched him wide-eyed and with hands tight clasped then all at once with a little fluttering sigh she rose thus the sergeant as he marched to and fro was suddenly aware of one who stood in the full radiance of the moon and with one hand outstretched towards him and now as he paused disbelieving his very eyes he saw that in her extended hand she held a great ripe peach sergeant she said speaking almost in a whisper oh sergeant won't you take it the heavy sabre thudded down into the grass and he took a sudden step towards her but even now he hesitated until coming nearer yet he could look down into her eyes then he spoke and his voice was very hoarse and uneven miss priscilla he said priscilla oh priscilla and with the word he had fallen on his knees at her feet and his strong solitary arm was folded close about her end of chapter eighteen